So now let's do, take a look at the matrix, uh, matrix effect inside of Cinema 4D. In order to look at the matrix, matrix effect, let me just go over here and uh, over here you can find matrix. So once I open up matrix, you might find that it is similar to cloner. So it is simply a clone of the object, but it does not actually duplicate objects right here. So, so to actually use the matrix, you have to do this. So I'm going to choose grid array itself as an example right here. And I can increase the count right here. So right now the count is 40. So let me just change it uh, out into something uh, like around 10 right here. So 10 by 10 right here. And let me select something like around three right there. So I got three matrix as you can see. So let me just increase the size of the matrix right here. So you can see that it is kind of like duplicating objects right over here. So what matrix does is it only uh, stores in points right here. So it only stores in point as you can see right here. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to uh, bring in cloner and then work around with the matrix. So let me just disable matrix like right here first and bring in cloner as well. So uh, now I'm going to go in uh, to the menu right over here and then I'm going to bring in cloner object now. So in cloner, I'm going to add in uh, an object so I can add in uh, something, let's say like a capsule right over here and I'm going to add it inside cloner right here. So in cloner, I want to link it to matrix. So I'm going to change the mode from linear to grid. And in grid array, you can see that it's almost like in the matrix. But in order to link with matrix uh, itself, I need to change this from uh, everything else to object. Right now, there's nothing. So what I'm going to do is drag the matrix in in the object right over here. So on the object, just drag in the matrix and turn it on. Once you do that, you can see that whatever you do up with the matrix now gets applied onto the materials over here. So now let me just change the settings of the matrix then. So right now it's in a grid array. So I'm going to uh, maybe increase the size right here, which actually increases the distance of the matrix just like this. So if I were to increase this out, you can see that this is the matrix. So I'm going to bring in an object, drag it onto the capsule right over here. And then I'm going to select this and add in something like a color to make it very interesting, just like this. I'm, I'm going to add in a color and maybe a Beckman uh, reflection, just like that as well. And over here, you can see that I got this. Now, what I can do is as I applied matrix. So remember that you have to use the cloner first and then when you once you do the matrix settings, uh, it has to actually be kept on object inside of cloner. But whenever you're working with matrix, be sure that uh, the object that you're working with is bigger than the cube. Otherwise, if it is smaller, the cube uh, might might not work out correctly. So this is what I mean. So if I were to really scale this down, as you can see, the cube will overtake everything else and you may not be able to see the object just like that. So I'm going to make sure that it is bigger. So uh, let's increase this in size again. So just increase this in size. And over here now what I can do is I can add in deformers onto this matrix right here. So I can go to this deformer and let's say I want to add in something like twist. And I'm going to add in twist to matrix now. And if I were to change the uh, twist right here, so let me just select the twist. If I were to change the angle, you can see that this is what happens. It does not actually change uh, the shape itself. You can see that the capsules are actually proportional. It does not actually change the shape, but it twists everything out just like that. I can add in other deformers as well. So let's add in something like a bend and keep it under matrix. And if I were to increase the strength, you can see that now I can bend this out just like this. If I were to bend it, you can see that both the effects are actually coming into play. So now if I were to move the matrix out right here, I can increase this in size or decrease this in size. And that is how it works like just like that. So over here now, this is how you can actually do an animation right here. So you can see that if I were to pull this down, all the uh, all the objects are scattered around. And if I were to pull this up, everything has been actually brought together. So now you might be wondering like what happens if you actually directly add in uh, 
the deformer onto the cloner itself. So let's actually try that out as well. So let me disable the matrix right over here. So let's say, let, uh, let us work with the cloner itself. So let's say I have a linear uh, or like a grid array cloner right here with similar settings right over here. So if we were to actually add in a deformer over here, so let's say uh, I want to add, add in deformer like squash and stretch. And if I were to keep it under uh, cloner instead, then what happens is that that means just uh, keep it under cloner over here. What happens is that uh, it actually does not work around quite well, as you can see. If I were to go to squash and stretch, and if I were to uh, go to its options, so let me just go to squash and stretch. And if I were to change the aspect, you can see that it actually distorts the entire object right there. So that is what happens if you do not apply the matrix. So the aim of the matrix is to not distort the objects, but only save the uh, value data of the places they are in so that whenever we apply uh, uh, apply any deformers, they just get affected with the uh, position and not the entire object itself. So let me just delete this out and I'm going to go to the cloner and I'm going to change this into um, an object just like this. I'm going to change this out onto an object, press this. So now you can see that this is how it lo looks like. So change this out. So there you go, that's how everything looks like. So you can see that twist is actually working out right here and that is how everything actually works like. So let me just delete the twist. Let's see what else we can do. So we can have uh, something like jiggle and drag it down onto matrix right over here and then work around with that as well. So there's the jiggle. If I were to change the strength, if I were to change the stiffness, that'll work around just like that. So if you want to go for different things like uh, tapering, drag it down onto matrix, then it works around with that as well. So over here on the cloner, it has to be selected as object. And over here, you see everything right here. So let me just increase uh, the deformer in size so that you can actually see what is happening. And if I have to increase the strength, you can see that it does not distort the object, but it only distorts uh, the position of the object. So once you actually go around and work around with it, then it actually changes out just like this. So you can create some cool level of effects just like that by using matrix. So you have this. So if you had to move this out, you can see that there's no object distortion, but this is how it actually looks like. So that is how uh, matrix works uh, inside of Cinema 4D. Hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share and subscribe.